our last talk in the session is uh, uh, will be presented by uh, Ray Gang Yang. That's Yang. me. Okay. My mom is telling me she speaks Chinese, and my wife speaks Chinese, so I should do better. Um, the title is uh, the title of the talk is Mask Off: Synthesizing Face Images in the Presence of Head Mounted Displays. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm Ray Gang Yang. I'm uh, with the uh, University of Kentucky and uh, at this time also with uh, Baidu Research in China. Uh, so I'm the last author on this list. And you have seen a lot of head-mount displays here. And so it's a great tool for a lot of uh, virtual reality applications. But it is not the best way of uh, have a face-to-face uh, communication. Uh, so what we would like to do is to digitally remove the head mount uh, display part and to create a synthetic, uh, to create the image as realistic as possible so that uh, we can use head mount display to, for head-to-head, -head to, to, for face-to-face -face, uh, uh, telepresence uh, applications. So we're certainly not the first person to look into this problem. Um, uh, back in 2015, Hao and his groups uh, design a special head mount display in which there is a depth camera to look at uh, the exposed face part. And inside the head mount display, there's a string sensors to measure the deformation of skin. And based on those input, it is able to drive an avatar. And then to 2016, the depth camera and the string sensor are replaced with uh, a few regular cameras. And those cameras track the, uh, look into the uh, mouse deformation and uh, um, eye deformation and a deep neural network is used to uh, is used to uh, derive the animation parameters to drive under the avatar. So both of those work try to turn those um, face images into avatars, which are not which are good for certain applications, but are not very good in, in my view, not very good for uh, tele presence uh, uh, um, operations. Uh, most related to our work is the face VR work, um, which was originally showing Archive 2016 and, uh, and, uh, and also presented at SIGGRAPH 2018. So it took two years to get this published in SIGGRAPH. Um, so the idea here is that, um, again, use cameras to look at uh, uh, the face as well as the eye, par uh, the eye part and, uh, and, and to drive a photorealistic, uh, um, uh, to synthesize photorealistic images. So the keyword here is reenactment. So basically the face image you show, you see on the left side, on your, on your right side, uh, in fact, all synthesized. Uh, they are not real images. So we have we have taken a different approach. We want to keep the original image as much as possible. We want to do the minimum change to the original image so that we can present something more than talking head. Should be able to maintain those natural gestures as well as facial expressions. So uh, let me explain a little bit how we actually do that. So we have two type of setups. One is a simulation setup, which we have a uh, we basically put someone on a chin rest and we have uh, the, the, the face camera and the near infrared camera to look at eyes. And we use this to generate some ground truth. And uh, in our real setup, we uh, modified a, a head mount display and we put two tiny cameras as well as uh, um, a light source inside head mount display, just like uh, previous approaches. And we also have, again, a, a fixed camera um, a color camera looking at the, the, the entire person. And this is our system pipeline. So we start with, uh, a, with the reconstruction of a personalized animatable uh, 3D face. And uh, with that face, uh, we, um, then our goal is that from the input frames, you can see on the top, those are two of the infrared images, as well as the input frame from the color camera, we want to be able to um, synthesize a facial image with the head mount display removed. So I'll talk those components step by steps. And the first is a uh, fairly, uh, fairly um, routine work, is the 3D head reconstruction. Uh, so we basically ask the user to move his head casually in front of the camera or up 
down, rotate, move around. And then we use structure for motion to create a 3D model. That 3D model is to create the 3D point cloud. This point cloud is further fitted with a blend shape model. So it's an animated model. We can change the mouse definition, we can change the facial expression, so on and so forth. And in the image below, you can see that those are the landmarks that are defined uh, um, in our 2D, uh, in our 3D model, as well as in those images. So our first task is to track um, based, on those, uh, based on those landmarks. In order to do tracking, the first thing is that we have to calibrate the LA cameras into a single system. Uh, so, um, but uh, and the, the eye camera and the front, the face camera do not have even, do not even have overlap view. So we use a a calibration board that is uh, that is can, that can be visible from both inside a head mount display and uh, uh, the face camera. So we first calibrate with the eye camera. And then the face camera look at the visible part of the calibration board because we know that's one piece of calibration board, then we can put everything together into the same coordinate system. Okay, so now everything is calibrated into, uh, under the same coordinate system. And then um, we do the face alignment that, and, and tracking. The face alignment is a win, is a win step process. Once we put, ask the user to put on the head mount display, then we do a transformation between the personalized head model and uh, the head mount display. And we also have dots in front of head mount display. So we basically we're tracking the, ca uh, the person's uh, pose, uh, the head pose using those dots. And um, for expression tracking, uh, we take it into consideration of, uh, again, we need to estimate basically the weights for the blend shape. Uh, so we have a, an energy minimization formulation. It has a number of terms. Uh, the first is the phase term. The second is the eye landmark terms. We also have a space-time smooth term. And always uh, the last one is the magic regularization term. And the, d the details can be found in our paper. So let me show you some results of our tracking. Uh, so on the on your left side, those are the inputs, the, the, the face camera, the near infrared camera, and then we overlay the deformed the track the 3D model onto the image. And here is another another example. You can see that all of those models are actually personalized. To demonstrate the to demonstrate the accuracy of tracking, we put a um, a sticker onto that person's face. You can see it's uh, stick to the face pretty well. Okay, all right. So let talk, let me talk about the uh, eye synthesis part. And uh, so we have infrared camera, which uh, actually it's not infrared; it's near infrared camera. Um, and we want to uh, um, produce a colorized version. It turned out to be a little bit difficult than we thought it would be. Uh, first, you will think that essentially this is, uh, we first thought it is as a, a red eye removal um, issue, but it's not that uh, simple. It turned out that the, the eye, our eye, in particular the iris reflection on the near infrared is uh, slightly different, uh, is visibly different than the reflection from regular uh, color uh, on the regular um, visible illumination. Okay. Uh, so um, what we are doing here is that we are using uh, example-based color colorization and uh, um, followed by a red eye removal effect. Okay. So here is our detailed formulation. Basically, we have to do uh, some kind of uh, um, histogram equalization and seed the, the color region with, uh, uh, with the colors from uh, the regular images and then perform some optimization based on the boundaries of different parts and uh, uh, between iris and uh, eyelid. So, and here I'm showing you some comparisons uh, between our colorization result versus uh, the class, versus some uh, uh, existing approaches. And uh, um, one, one thing you notice that if you just do color, uh, red eye uh, collection use uh, uh, existing approaches, on um, the contrast between the uh, between the iris and the white part is not as sharp as ours uh, because again because the the contrast on the near infrared image is still is simply not there is not strong enough okay and here is another result 
And here I'm showing a, showing you a video. Um, so this is from our simulation setup. So I, I can show you the ground truth. And the, the top two are from the, let me play this again. So you can see that uh, from the with red eye only, and then the, our, the, the middle is our result, and the, the right side is the ground truth. Okay. So our last step is to um, do the composition. Okay, uh, we have a relative part of the face that is being occluded. Uh, so we try using painting; it does not work very well. So we end up have to use some of the reference images. So those are, those reference images are images that we captured to construct the three D model. So based on our tracking result, basically it's from head pose, landmark, and also um, our um, also a, a, a temporal constraint. We try to pick an image from the reference uh, from from our reference image sequence that is closest in terms of head pose distance and the landmark distance okay and from that image uh, from that re reference image we try to warp this image to the current input frame based on the landmarks okay so now here is our final composition mask okay uh, so the black uh, so the green part is the original image okay we leave it as it is okay and uh, uh, the red region is the region that we will copy it from the reference image from the image we just retrieved from our data set in which that person is not wearing the head mount display okay and the purple region I'm sorry about the color scheme it's a little bit difficult to see the purple region is those two red eyes, uh, are the regions from those uh, two cameras, from those two eye cameras. And uh, there are some regions that, uh, there are some gray regions that are used for blending. Okay, so, all right. Um, so now this complete our pipeline, and now I'm gonna show you some result. So here is, you can see the image captured by the infrared camera, and this is the, with the input image with face occluded. You can see that over 50% of the face has been occluded. Okay. And the last one is our result. One thing we've, one of the reasons that we have to use a reference image is that you, if you look at that person's head, uh, the, the, the top of the head, you can see that some of the hair is actually being pushed down by, by the band of head mount display. So no matter how much we, we do in, in, in the face, like we can do the face in a decent manner, but the hair is very difficult to get it right. So that's why we get, actually get it from the reference images. And here is another example. Okay. So you can see that here we try to maintain as much as possible the, uh, the original input, input image. Okay, so the overhead we have for doing that is that every time you put a head mount display, uh, before you put a head mount display, we ask you to look around, make a, to create a 3D model. And once you put on the head mount display, then we use the something that we have recorded before to replace a major part of the a major part of the image that, that is missing. So in this way, we get not just the talking head, we actually get the most of the uh, face images. We just replace that part that has to be replaced. Okay, uh, so with that, I think I will conclude my talk. And in particular, I want to thank uh, the first author, and uh, who unfortunately cannot be here because he's afraid of not being able to get a visa back into the United States. Okay, and uh, thank you for your attention. Wow, wow. I'm Henry Fuchs from UNC. Yes, I know I've you. I've known uh, Rui Gang for a few years. This uh, is so it's, great. It's more than a few years. Yes. <laughs> uh, so um, the next step, presumably, would be to show these reconstructed images to the other person who's mm. also wearing a head mount, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So we could do telepresence. Two-way, yes. Right. So what you didn't talk about was what is the range of views from which your reconstructions look okay, both from the 
for the other person, you know, how close can I get? Can I walk around you? Can I see your room? Because you're not reconstructing the room. You said there's a background, but mm -hmm. that's not going to change. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. how much of the way are you to having the telepresence that you talk about? Okay. So I guess I'm not that advanced when we design this system. When we design this system, I really have this regular um, video conference scenario uh, in mind. That is, you have a head on display, and uh, you have some kind of shared desktop, and but you want to uh, basically want to replace. Uh, we want to have this as your image. We don't want. We, we have not considered uh, uh, to change the viewpoint to allow free viewpoint. This is uh, as it is. But think about a FaceTime. If you want to do FaceTime, but you have to wear a head-mount display, that's something we want to do. So you can get the benefit of having a, a head-mount display to show additional information, but it will show the, not prevent you from talking with a person uh, using just traditional 2D teleconferencing systems. So what additional information can you still see? I mean, right now, I use FaceTime all the time, and mm -hmm. it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. I don't have to wear anything. Mm -hmm. I see it from one point of view. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. thing that I want for telepresence is not just to see the head of that person, mm -hmm. but I want to be able to walk around them. I want to be able to share and be in a virtual environment. Mm -hmm. If it's just FaceTime, well, I'm fine I, with it now. Ah, okay. So when you have a head-mounted uh, display, one thing you could possibly do is that uh, you could uh, have additional information such as uh, um, like your shared desktop. Uh, or maybe you have a CAD model, so um, that it will not be somewhere, you don't have to put this into a virtual environment, so everyone can look at this virtual model, but uh, it will not be, it's very easy to overlay a virtual model in the final compo uh, composite image. And uh, so I can show it as if they are not wearing display, but it's gonna be difficult uh, without head mount display, if we just composite the, the virtual model in 2D space, it will be difficult to see the spatial relationship. So you get the benefit of a, um, uh, or, or some way, maybe I can say this, you get the benefit of a augmented, augmented reality display uh, with current technology from the other person's perspective. Great, thank you.